Praise the Lord. Welcome to this webcast over here today. Uh, I'd like for us to turn to Psalms chapter 20, verse 7, and want to read it in the NIV version. It reads, Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we put our trust in the name of the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 21, verse 31, this is uh, Solomon speaking when he used to walk with God. He says, the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Today's title is, Safety is of the Lord. There are three points I'd like to make today with a comparison. Point number one, the horses in that day. In scripture, the horse is used as a symbol of fleshly strength and might in war. Other North nations had horses and chariots for the military strength. The more horses and chariots they had, the stronger they appeared to be against other nations. But at this time, Israel did not have any horses and chariots for battle. Later on, when King Solomon came into power, and when King Solomon backslid, then they went ahead and had horses and chariots. Israel in Deuteronomy, they wanted a king. And in the 17th chapter, it says that they said, we want a king, we want a king, we want a king, we want a king, we want a king. And I'll put it in my words. The Lord said, you cry babies, you can have a king. But this king has to be of our people. And there's going to be some rules and some laws that I want these kings to follow. He gave Moses 10 laws to give to the kings. I want to read just three of them to, today to you because of time. And it, we go to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 16 and 17, and it reads, The king must not build up a large stable of horses for himself or send his people to Egypt to buy horses. For the Lord has told you, you must never, ever return to Egypt. Verse 17, the king must not take, a, take many wives for himself because they will turn his heart away from the Lord. And that was another weakness of King Solomon. He had many wives and many concubines. And he must not accumulate large amounts of wealth in silver and gold for himself. Now, large amounts of silver and gold for himself. It's okay to accumulate silver and gold and wealth. But what is a large amount? Well, Solomon would end up being the richest king in the whole wide world. Now, God's commandment here was that the, all the kings of Israel should not, like other rulers, put their trust in costly preparations of war, but to trust in the Lord who will see them through. Later on in Isaiah, the prophet reminds Israel again. Isaiah 31 verse 1 says, What sorrows await those who look to Egypt for help, trusting their horses and chariots and charioteers and depending on the strength of human armies. Instead of looking to the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Now, Solomon, he knew all these commandments. He knew all the scriptures, but yet, when he got in a backslidden condition in Ecclesiastics, he went ahead and bought 1,400 chariots and he bought 12,000 horse, horses. So he had a total of 14,800 horses he bought from Egypt. 
Now, Egypt was the main place where uh, they had chariots and horses for seal of war. Today, the, we live in the United States of America. And I say I'm proud to have been born here in America. I'm proud to be an American. But let me tell you this. America might have the biggest and strongest army in the world, and that's good, but it's the safety is in the Lord. That's where our safety is. I put my trust in the Lord because safety is of the Lord. He, don't matter the size of your army. It doesn't matter your prosperity as a nation. Three months ago, the United States was boasting about how much the economy was doing well, better than ever, and all the material blessings that was happening, and look at us now. Now people are in need. A lot of people are out of work. Thank God for those of you that are working. Thank God for those of you that put aside for a rainy day. Thank God that the America is trying to help out with safe guidance uh, rules and helping out to send some money. Uh, some of you have received $1,200 per adult, uh, $500 per child, and praise God, it's a good help. Got to pay it back. Uh, when I receive mine, I haven't yet, but I'm gonna pay my tithes first. $120 for me, $120 for Madeline, Sister Madeline, because us and Jesus, we're partners in everything we do. I got a generous partner. You got a generous partner. Your partner, Jesus, says this, I'm going to take care of you. You can have 90%. Just give me my 10% for the house of God. And I am one of those, and I hope you're one of those that are going to trust in Jesus no matter what it is. You may be poor at this time. You may only have 50 bucks in your wallet, in your bank account. But I say give that $5, $5 to Jesus. And Jesus is a test. Jesus is going to test you. He might give you 500 and it's easy to give $50. That's pretty easy. What about when God gives you $5,000? Well, those are going to say, hey, that's 500 bucks. You could make a, you could buy some for 500 bucks. Well, I'm going to pay my 500 bucks. There she is. What about when the Lord gives you $50,000? The devil's going to whisper in your ear and say, hey, you can use those $5,000. Your church don't need, living word don't need those $5,000. Hey, but I'll tell you what, me and Jesus, we're partners. I'm going to give him the 5000 and he's going to give me the other forty-five. Praise God. I'm going to trust him with little, and I'm going to trust him with much. I put my trust in the Lord. Safety is in the Lord. Point number two, Egypt and money. The Lord says, you must never return to Egypt. Egypt, to us, represents the world of sin. The Lord delivered Israel from their bondage out of Egypt and said, you must never return to Egypt again. Well, how does it affect us today, child of God? Well, the Lord freed us from bondage, the bondage of sin. He freed us from Egypt. And he says, don't return back to sin. Don't return back to bondage again. Trust in the Lord, and he's going to see you through. You must never, never return to Egypt. You must never, never go back to your old sinful ways of the world. Don't get entangled with the world because it could cause you to backslide. Just like I did Solomon. Money. Hey, money is good. Amen. If you got too much money, you want to give me some? I'll take it. Long was made the proper way. Not by deceitfulness, not by trickery or bribery and selling drugs and things like that. Clean money, I'll take it. It is God, the Lord, that giveth you power to get wealth. He is the one. Well, how do you know that, Brother Louis? I'll, let, I'll read it to you. In Deuteronomy, Chapter 8, verse 10 to 14. I'm going to start there because let me tell you what happens here. In as God prospers you, especially when you're a tither, all of a sudden God just starts to prosper you and bless you. God wants to bless everybody, but more his own people with abundance of 
all necessities, success, and even money. But he tests us how we're going to handle our money. Are we going to hoard our money to ourselves? Are we going to help the needy, the poor, the widows? He's going to entrust you with this money. It's up to you to decide how, what you're going to do with God and trust you. He'll trust you a little bit. And if he'll trust you with more, he will. Well, praise God. I said, Lord, you can trust me. It's okay. You want to give me a million dollars? Yeah, I'll have gladly tied a hundred thousand dollars. Praise God. Nine hundred thousand for me. Uh, I don't you know, nine hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money, but that's not what I'm looking for. I want to write that check to the Lord and say to the house of God, one hundred thousand dollars is your ten percent. Amen. Uh, but there's a warning. God warned Israel. And God wants to warn us today, be careful in prosperity. I'm going to bless you, but be careful in prosperity. Here's a warning he gave Israel of backsliding in prosperity. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10 to 14, it reads, When thou hast eaten and are full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God, for the good land which he has given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments, got to keep his commandments, in his judgments and in his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and your stomach is full and as you have built nice houses or goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, that means you got plenty. Then thy heart be lifted up with pride, and thou forget the Lord thy God. Verse 17 says this, And thou shalt say in thy heart, my power and my might has gotten me this wealth. No, my brother. No, my sister. Verse 18 is the key right here. It reads, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. The Lord wants us to be debt free. He says so in his word, and I believe it. He wants, it's okay to have a mortgage on your home. It's okay to have a car payment, but God wants us to be debt free. He says, you shall lend and not borrow. I mean, you go lend, your money's in the bank. You loan your money to the bank. You're not paying much interest, less than half percent, but you're loaning the money to the bank. You, and the servant is, the borrower is servant to the lender. Don't get in debt. First Timothy 6.10 says, talking about money, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. So it's okay to make a lot of, let God let you make a lot of money. Put God first. Be in the house of God when it's here. Don't get too wrapped up and says, well, I need more. I want to buy a bigger yacht. I want to buy a bigger SUV, a Cadillac SUV. No, no, no. Your salvation and that of your children comes first. God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Point number three, the last point as I close. Safety is of the Lord. What safety is of the Lord? Yes, it is. What about now we got this coronavirus going on? It's, it's affecting people. Well, no one is exempt from it. Three people of our church have gotten it. Two of them are nurses and one uh, healthy. So healthy that he, you know, he's better than anybody else, health foods and so forth. He got the virus, a businessman. But you see, thank the good Lord because of the safety of his children. They're all recovering right now. But there may be some might get it and you may not recover. Yesterday I got a text that says, pray for this brother who's an evangelist. 
in our Jesus name movement, well known. He went and he got coronavirus. They, he went to the respirator. People prayed for him. He came out, went home. And yesterday he got a phone call. His wife got a phone call. Your husband has two days to live. So life is not promised to anybody. We all are not exempt from it. But I want to appeal to you, to everyone listening today, whether you're a sinner, if you don't know Jesus, now is the time to come to Jesus. Now is the time to be under a shadow of his wings. Now is the time to change your life for the better and come out from bondage of sin. And to the backslider, I want to say this. Come back to Jesus. You've tasted of the good fruit, the goodness of Jesus. Jesus is waiting for you, just like the prodigal, the father of the prodigal son waited for his son to come home with open arms. Jesus wants you back. Jesus wants to bless you. Jesus wants to protect you. And to the saint, I say, remain faithful. Trust in the Lord in all things. No matter what you're going through, the Lord is going to see you through. Trust in Jesus because safety is of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you.